uh, welcome to Quinell City Council meeting number eight, Tuesday, March 5, 2024. Um, I'll call the meeting to order and rec recognize that we meet on the traditional territory of Lataco Dene Nation. Uh, I will first look for uh, a motion to approve our agenda, and the only change to the agenda is that we are postponing item K2, and um, we do have one late, late attachment to item E1. So with those changes, could I have a motion to adopt the, uh, the agenda as, as amended? Uh, Councillor McKelvey, Councillor Runge, any discussion? All in favor? Carried. I'd now like to get a, a motion to adopt the minutes of the public hearing held February 20th, 2024. Uh, oh, oh, Councillor Rudenberg. Rudenberg. I don't know why I have trouble with that, but sorry. And Councillor Goulet. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Next one is adopt the regular council meeting minutes of February 2024. Councillor Rudenberg, we'll try that one again. There we go. Councillor McKelvey. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. And finally, adopting the special open council meeting minutes of February 27. And I did, oh, I did, I did notice a little error in there that I'd like to amend, and that is that. And I thank Councillor Vic for presiding at that meeting. Uh, but he needs to be recorded as a presiding officer at that meeting. So Councillor Vic is moving that. Councillor McKelvey is seconding that. All in favor? Carried. Okay, it gives me pleasure now to introduce um, Staff Sergeant uh, Richard Wasine and uh, also Corporal Steve Pelche, if you could come forward. We're going to do some presentations to um, some of our auxiliary members. So if you gentlemen could come up, and then we will call our auxiliaries up as we, um, as we need them. And uh, these are for uh, Mark Heinzelman, Francisco Gonzalez, and Michael Perkins. Unfortunately, uh, Mark Heinzelman could not be with us. So I'm just going to take a moment here and move my microphone over there. I'm coming around to help out with the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Council. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, in 2003, the RSMP, 2023, I should say, the RSMP eliminated the uh, auxiliary program and we kind of revamped it. It's back in the stages of uh, creating a new program and into a tiered system, and uh, we're just working our way through that. But at the time of uh, termination in 2023, we had uh, three auxiliaries that uh, service the uh, the community of Quinell for uh, for an extended period of time, and we want to take this opportunity to thank them for their uh, for their service. And uh, Frank Gonzalez, he uh, you might as well come up, Frank. Uh, Frank uh, was an auxiliary from uh, October of uh, 1994 to April of 2023, and he had 28 years in six months uh, service as an auxiliary who uh, serviced the community and uh, helped reduce community harm and uh, was, for me, they were uh, the, the backbone of uh, the RCMP. They were, they were there to, to support us frontline members and uh, uh, keep the community safe and keep us safe. So I really uh, appreciate that. We have uh, two certificates here, one from uh, uh, to commemorate your service as an auxiliary member with the RCMP and another for your 25, uh, over 25 years uh, service, as well as your 25 year pin, your encased uh, auxiliary badge, which was uh, A6807. And uh, a challenge coin for you there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. You're not done yet. You're too loaded down with hardware. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for your service. Okay. Two certificates here, Frank. Thank you so much. And 
And uh, Michael Perkins, come on up. Mike was a, an auxiliary from uh, April of 2006 to April of 2023. He had 17 years as an auxiliary in the community, and his badge was X or X ray 1722. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor wants to say. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you for your service. Thank you very much. I also want to acknowledge while we're here, uh, Mark Heiselman couldn't make it tonight. Uh, he also uh, served the community for an extended period of time from May of 1987 till October of 2021. He had 34 years as an auxiliary in the community. His badge was uh, A or Alpha 4007 and unfortunately couldn't make it, but uh, I wanted to acknowledge his uh, service as well. well thank you. Well, th thank you for that. And um, I, I, one condition of um, of receiving all of that hardware is that you have to sit through the rest of the meeting. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so at this time, um, we would like to go on Zoom and introduce Lindsay Taylor, Manager of Government Relations for Northern BC. And uh, Council, you have a late attachment that accompanies this presentation. And so, Lindsay, the floor is yours. We have we have no video or pardon me we have no audio. Yeah, we still have no audio. When I when I when I hear you, I'll give you the the high sign. Me now? Are you able to hear me now? I am actually not able to see anybody right now. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. I can't see anybody at the moment. Am I going to be sharing my screen or do you have the presentation? She has to share her screen. She has to share yeah. her screen. Can you let her go? Have I got to do something? <laughs> yes, you have to share your screen. And we can't hear you anymore. I see what you mean. Okay. I think it's on our end. Just hang on one second. Are you able to hear me now? This looks encouraging. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, fabulous. Thank you so much, Council. Um, really appreciate you having me tonight. Um, I just have a couple of updates about what's going on with the transit system for the City of Quinnell. Um, there is a one policy update in terms of our fare policies that we need approval on today, and then the rest of the presentation is for, in, for information. Um, so with that, I'll get into that, and I'll be happy to answer any questions at the end of the presentation. 
So one of the exciting uh, updates or uh, improvements that we're going to be making to the transit system is we're going to be introducing our UMO project, which is an electronic fare project. So uh, our customers will soon be able to use um, either their cell phones or to be able to use a UMO card, which is similar to what you'd see in the um, TransLink system as, their, um, as the cards that they have there, to be able to tap on to a system and to be able to use funds in that way. So it just is offering a new way for riders to be able to to pay for the bus that way they're not having to bring change or actually purchase um, monthly passes or, or tickets as well so they'll be able to just bring that with them and have that already available um, so it's just replacing outdated technology that and um, it will be able to provide just a, a different way to, uh, and an improvement for people to be able to pay for the bus um, we're hoping that we'll be seeing of an increase in ridership as a result of this project um, but because we do have riders that will always use cash as an option, we will maintain that option for them. In terms of the customer experience, um, people, our customers will be able to download the UMO app and, and be able to pay for uh, the fare through that. Um, it'll also be connected through um, our ride um, uh, to be our trip planning technology, which I'll speak to in a little bit in the later in this uh, presentation, um, or people will be able to use a reloadable card. Um, those relo reloadable cards will be available through uh, retail vendors, um, and all of them will be managed uh, through one universal customer website and customer call center. Um, there'll be validators on board the buses that will be installed in the next couple of months. In the future, we are going to also move to the acceptance of credit or debit tap payments so people will not actually have to go and get a card they'll be able to use that as a, a way of paying um, and as i mentioned there's going to be a dedicated call center for the whole province uh, to support riders through this transition so there's three or there's a, a few universal policies that are being introduced that uh, I'll speak to today. Um, these these policies will help maximize customer benefits and they'll align uh, in, in order to be able for us to configure things on the back end on our end for us to be able to um, actually implement the UMO system. So for information, the universal refund policy, so if somebody is to have a UMO card um, or using UMO through their app on their phone, if they uh, want a refund through that, um, they will be able to do that. Um, they will be able to do that for unused for, uh, fare products. So if they're to buy, say, a 10-pack pass, which is a, a reduced um, cost if you're buying them all 10 at once, um, they will be able to get a refund for that if they are unused or if they would if they are moving or whatnot so we'll, we'll be able to provide that but anything that is partially used say they use two of those 10 tickets we will not be able to provide refunds for that also people will be able to upload money in terms of having um, you know stored value on on their card and anything greater than uh, ten dollars they'll be able to get a refund for that in terms of an expiration policy, so this is again another change in, in terms of our fare policies, is anybody who purchases a 10 ride ticket or package um, will have to use that in 365 days, so in one year, or else they will expire from the date of purchase. In terms of a cash cash balance, which I spoke to before, um, so people can upload money, whether they do that themselves uh, every month and manually do that, or whether they would like that to be monthly, it is loaded onto their card regular, uh, regularly or automatically. Um, they will be able to do that, and those sum, that the sum or that the monies that is on the, that card will be reduced every time that they tap onto the bus. Um, there's also a cap as well, so every time that they use the trip twice, so if you are going to work and back there will be a cap um, which is considered a day pass mm -hmm. and so they will be able to ride the system for throughout the day if they have any other trips that they would like to make. The policy that is here for approval today is we are changing the monthly pass so if regularly Today, customers would uh, purchase a March uh, pass and it would be good for the whole month. We're moving to a 30 day pass. So uh, users can buy a 30 day pass anytime during the month and they will have that monthly pass for the next 30 days. Um, so it's beneficial for customers that you know would have purchased a previously monthly pass in the middle of March and now they're actually getting the full 30 day use out of that. 
One of the other projects that I want to update council on is we are getting next ride technology introduced to the system and, and uh, installed in all of our buses. So what this will do is we are going to have automatic vehicle location technology installed to all of the buses. So essentially a GPS. So our customers will be able to see where their bus is in real time and be able to better anticipate arrival times of that bus. Um, there will also be visual displays on the bus for anybody who is hearing impaired will be able to see what the next um, uh, stop is that's coming up on their trip. And there's going to, be, going to also be audio announcements inside the bus and outside the bus for anybody who's visually impaired so they know where they are along that trip as well. Next ride is going to be live in Quinell in the summer of 2024. So we are just in the in the midst of installing and, and getting drivers uh, trained and, and up to speed about how to use that technology. Um, so it's an exciting, again, improvement that we our customers will be able to experience. I wanted to talk a little bit also about ridership in Quinell. Um, I wanted to provide a comparison here. So I did a, I provided a comparison in terms of Williams Lake. And so what I have here is our ridership from 2819, so pre, pre COVID, um, up to 2223. And so as you can see uh, on this slide, we're able to see that uh, our trajectory in terms of ridership recovery is quite similar to what we've been seeing in a similar system like Williams Lake. Um, currently today, we are about at 87% of ridership recovery from what we were pre-COVID. Next year, we are project, uh, projecting about 77,000 rides in the uh, in the system, which will bring us closer to about 92% in terms of ridership recovery. Um, again, a little bit about past work or prior work that we've done in the system. So we did complete a service review in 2016. In that service review, we uh, reviewed performance, provided some options for service improvements, and did some public engagement as well. Um, as a result of that service review, we did make some minor route and schedule changes in both 2017 and 2018. Um, we did do another full schedule review in uh, 2023, and that was because we were doing kind of the pre-work for the next ride system. So we were doing some uh, uh, stop sequencing, making sure that we knew where all of the stops were and they were in the right sequence that we have on in, in our database, um, but also making sure that all of the trip times are matching what we're seeing on the schedule. Um, what we what we had found through that was that uh, the trip times were not matching what were in the schedule and we were running quite behind. And so we adjust, adjusted the schedule um, because of those runtime issues in 2023 to make sure that our trips are actually reflecting what actual trip times are. Um, in 2024, we are going to be adding additional hours so that we can maintain the previous service levels that we had pre-COVID and back in before the 2023 service change that we made. We anticipate making those changes in September of 2024. Um, just wanted to give a bit of an update about fares as well. So currently the fare for the conventional system is $1.75. Um, it's similar to systems of this size, but I think there are opportunities to review what those fares look like. Currently, as we are implementing UMO in a number of our systems, uh, we are doing fare reviews and for systems that require a fare review in order to make those policy changes to, make, uh, to be able to implement UMO. Um, so that's kind of what's been prioritized today. Also, I want to mention as part of the Safe Restart Funding Agreement, where we have uh, the province and federal government were able to provide some funds to be able to um, supplement any uh, any reduction in ridership and thus fair revenue. Um, we, uh, the, the city of Quinnell also agreed that they, as part of receiving that money, that they would maintain essential transit service levels and also maintain fares as well. Um, that agreement uh, is ending in March 31st on March 31st, 2025. And so we anticipate doing a fair review in 2025 to be able to um, to be able to analyze whether it makes sense for us to be right, uh, to raise the fares and what impact that would have on our customers and our ridership as well. And that's the end of my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that council has at this time. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, before I go to questions, uh, I have a report here from the Director of Community Services. Is that, should we be looking at that report now before we go to questions? Um, I think it's fine to take advantage of the opportunity with Lindsay here to ask questions. I think during the business part of the meeting, we can deal with that item unless uh, 
Okay. Yeah. I, I, but if yeah, you have no any questions so about I'll UMO or or any of the information that Lindsay's sort of provided or just general questions about transit, um, I think it's a good opportunity to uh, to take advantage of the fact that Lindsay's here. All right. So uh, questions, uh, Councillor Vick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Lindsay. <clears throat> I got a couple of questions for you. Um, uh, what? How many jurisdictions have already uh, completed the transition to the UMO system? Um, so through the mayor, we've uh, started on the island, and so we've done all of Vancouver Island at this point. We've started the south coast as well, and we're starting to head over into the Okanagan. So I think in total there's about 16 systems that will have UMO by the end of this year. Um, and so after the northern communities, we'll be moving down to the Kootenays. Perfect. And of those 16, sorry, of those that have made the transition, are you able to comment on the effect on ridership at this stage? Yeah, we've uh, th seen quite an uptake on uh, the UMO service so far. Um, typically, people that are boarding the bus are seeing other people using their app or using a card, and so that's kind of been generating a lot of in interest. I think the other advantage is, is the U-Pass program, and so Quinnell has a U-Pass program um, for the UNBC campus, and so we that is a great way also of generating some interest in the in uh, the UMO service as well. That will actually be um, integrated into Quinell out back in September of 2024 um, so that will be another great generator of interest in the in the program okay do you do you have any statistics on the effect on ridership uh, generally what we're it's it's very early in these stages at this point and so I think um, what we'll see and what we'll continue to monitor we're going to be getting a lot of great data coming from this program or from this project as well and so we'll start to see, ha, be able to provide some more feedback on what that's looking like but I just say in general we've just seen a lot of interest and, and a lot of transition from people so far okay and then I, I noted in the report that that director Norburn's going to speak to um, the with the uh, uh, ability to take debit and credit in the future um, does that not affect the uh, does that not affect the use of the of this part of the umo program with the ridership card um, so the, it's just providing another option for be able for people to be able to use a different product. So if there's like tourists or visitors to Quinell, they'll be able to do that without actually having to download an app or actually go per or not purchase a card. The card is free, but actually go and find and get a card from a, a vendor. And so it's just it's providing another easy option for people to be able to use that. The advantage of having a UMO um, app downloaded, which is an account or also on the card, is you're you're able to get discounted products as well. So a monthly pass or a ten pack pass as well. I see. So if I'm using my debit or credit, I would pay a slightly different fare on a one of basis. It's a. It's the same. It'll be the same fare uh, for that immediate use. But if you're a regular user, you would probably use a different product, like a monthly pass or a ten pack pass. Right. And do you foresee a change in the price or the cost to the community? I believe we're looking at thirty thousand dollars a year for this system. Will that be affected by the implementation of using debit and credit with the? So I don't know how your how those merchant fees are being paid. Can you comment uh, when on that? This, that will be the second phase of the project, and so I'm happy to provide an update to Council then as to what that will look like and how that impacts the budget. But at this point, this phase one, this is the, the information that we have in terms of uh, financial implications. Okay. And sorry, one last question. Now, with the UMO, with the ridership card, are residents able to use this uh, technology or this system if they travel to the Lower Mainland? Is there compatibility with that? Yeah, so there, you are able to use other transit systems as well. So it, it's geolocated, and so if you were to move to a different system, and it, you'd be able to pay that fare, and the fares would still go to um, that uh, that local government. So um, because uh, all of the fares that are are received through Quinell go to, uh, to offset the the local um, budget or the sorry the local cost for transit, um, that it would it would actually go to the other community depending on where they are traveling to. So, okay. Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks for all the, answering all the questions. Uh, Councillor Runge. Yeah, lots of great, lots of great questions, Councillor Vic. Uh, I've got a question with regards to riders. Are they going to be notified prior to their expiry? They're on the month. You know, do they get a little, you know, app, you know, badge or whatever that says, "Hey, I'm, you're almost ready to expire." Yeah. So there are like push notifications and whatnot that come through the app itself. 
Um, also, just for council's awareness, there are two different phases phases of um, public engagement that we're going to be doing through this as well. So we will be up in, we do have a dedicated engagement coordinator that will be up in Quinnell to do more kind of stakeholder engagement. And then we'll also be um, in, uh, in Quinnell for the actual implementation week as well. And so they'll be able to be at exchanges and at bus stops to be able to help riders either download the app or just giving them that information. Again, there is a transition period, so we will still have monthly passes and tickets, um, actual uh, physical tickets for the, the next six months. And so it's a, it's just a, the, a, the launch date, but there still is a transition period that people are able to use uh, existing products. Perfect. And so once we go fully to the, the UMO app and the UMO usage, will, will that, how often will that data be shared with uh, Quinell City staff so that, you know, we're tracking routes or tracking, you know, you know, might, might indicate that we're missing something or, you know, need a route change. How often will that happen? Um, we're, again, happy to discuss also how often we would like to report back to Council. And so um, I think that we're happy to receive direction from Council and in discussions with staff about what, how often that information should be passed along and, and, and to be able to include ourselves in different planning processes and whatnot so that uh, we're making sure we're making good use of that data. Yeah, because for me, the real-time data is fabulous. Like, you know, then we see if there's, you know, what happens with regards to events, what happened with regards to tourists using it and all those types of things, which we wouldn't get if we're just getting that data once every X number of years. Uh, my other question is, how do our uh, prices and uh, rider numbers stack up to other communities, possibly not Williams Lake? Uh, because, you know, I'm just looking at the cost of it and, you know, right now it's about three bucks a user that just for the additional UMO cost. And, you know, how, how does that stack up relative to communities on the island right now? Uh, so currently, right now, I believe Victoria is two fifty, uh, but they did do a survey, a uh, fair review as well recently. Um, they had to do that in terms of the configuration of UMO, and so they are going to be increasing the price. Um, but I'd say generally, I'd say that there is probably opportunity in Quinell to raise the fair prices. I think it is low in comparison to, or it's it's time for a fair increase to be honest. So I think uh, next year after March thirty first, twenty twenty five. Um, there will be a great opportunity to increase prices and we'll be able to do some analysis analysis in terms of um, how that will impact users, how that will impact ridership and kind of what fluctuation we'll see in that. So we have a whole dedicated team um, that does fair reviews and fair analysis and so we'll be happy to support that process when it's time. And I guess my final question, as more and more communities get on the same system, uh, do you see economies of scale so that those that cost of using uh, UMO actually declines for each uh, municipality, like that, that portion, that yearly portion? Um, to be honest, I'll have to report back to council on that. I think this is right now, again, phase one. Phase two, we'll be looking at that whole debit and credit piece, and there'll also still be a number of other communities to be included um, in the UMO system. Also right now, HandyDart, um, our custom service for other systems. Right now we have a paratransit system in Quinell, but other systems that have a, a defined uh, custom and conventional system, um, they the custom systems are not included in this. So I think there's still many phases, um, and uh, we'll, we'll still learn about, again, economies of scale and how what that impact to budget will be in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Uh, Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you very much for the report. Um, <clears throat> I think one thing that should uh, definitely be mentioned is, okay, first off, it's $30,000, which seems expensive, and I, I mean, it kind of is, but but um, staff right now is spending over 100 hours every year counting coin and counting cash, so this should significantly reduce the amount of time that staff is, is working on these things so they can be doing other things. So I think the, the, the trade-off is, is actually gonna work for us even better. But thank you very much for everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Anyone else? Uh, I just have a, a question here um, because in your presentation, Lindsay, you said that um, that this would be a cost-saving me measure, but at the same time, we're looking at thirty thousand a year. So, is this truly a cost-saving me measure in ter in in view of the fact that this technology is going to cost us thirty thousand a year? 
Um, in terms of a cost saving measure, I think, you know, it's it's really it's a customer experience improvement. I think there's opportunities that come along with this as well. So, for example, one of the opportunities that I'd like to explore more with the city is um, developing the pro pass program. And so that's identifying workplaces where we can work with them to um, provide uh, discounted monthly passes to employers to really, you know, um, it, it highlight how the and, and provide opportunities for uh for their workers and to be able to be taking more transit. I think uh, there's just there's lots of opportunity in terms of just improving the past programs that we have available as well. And so um, with that, I think there are there could be some improvements in terms of ridership, which is again gener generates revenue. Um, and then also again, there's cost savings for customers as well for having just more or different options uh, for for different pass options and whatnot for using um, yeah for purchasing different and fair products. So I think those are the, some of the kind of cost uh, or financial benefits of it. But really, it's it's a huge customer service improvement in, for for people because they don't have to go to a physical location to actually buy a fair product. They'd be able to use the phone that they have on them every day to be able to purchase their fare. Okay, thank you. No other questions, comments? Well, thank you, Lindsay, and uh, again, we're, we're going to be discussing this a little bit later on in the meeting when we have um, the report coming up under K-1, so thank you for, um, for chiming in with us, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Take care. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is that um, we do not have any items arising from previous special closed meetings, nor do we have any unfinished business. Uh, we do have committee one committee report, and this is February 16th, Financial Sustainability and Audit Committee Chair Summary, Councillor Vick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a review of our uh, FSAC meeting, which we held on February 16th. Um, uh, the, the highlight of the meeting, obviously, was we took another hard look at the operating budget, and uh, ultimately we felt comfortable with the draft, comfortable enough to bring it to a public engagement session, which we held at last council meeting. And there's uh, this is going to come up later on the agenda tonight. Um, Next, we discussed uh, recognition for the volunteerism at our fire halls. Uh, Chief Ron Richard uh, attended the meeting and reviewed a potential volunteer sign for the new fire hall. Um, the existing volunteer sign is on the back side of the building, as I recall, but we would like uh, to entertain putting a sign on the front side of the building where the public can uh, observe it. Our volunteer firefighters provide a tremendous volunteer service for our community, and the committee felt that an additional illuminated sign was entirely appropriate to bring recognition to their service, and there's a recommendation to follow. Um, the next item we talked about was um, the sculpture of a moose, but Mr. Mayor, I see your report's coming up after mine, so I'm not going to elaborate too much on that. I'll let you get all the thunder in on that one. Um, so uh, I have one recommendation um, that I'll move that the FSAC committee recommends to council that up to $7,500 be used from council initiatives to install a volunteer sign on the fire hall. Okay, moved by Councillor Vick, seconded by Councillor Elliott. Any discussion? Yeah. Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just uh, wondering, Chair, if we did have a brief discussion about the size of the sign and where it was going to be located, and we were hoping to maybe get it a little bit bigger. Have we been updated on that? I have not, Councillor. Okay. Uh, Director Bolton, do we have any, any feedback on no, that? No, that's okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will be discussing that with the chief, um, but it is it, it is pretty well decided that it's going to go on that center column. Um, <coughs> we're talking about potentially having it a little bit bigger little if bit they could get it. Yes, so, yes. yeah, if you could ask that for us, that'd be okay, great. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, we have a mover seconder. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so the next item, then, I think this is... Um, Yes, bring Bert's moose home. This is a report from myself uh, to council. And the purpose of this report 
is to seek council's approval of up to $5,000 from our council initiatives account for purposes of transporting a metal moose. And I want to be clear here, it's not donated directly to the city by Camosun College. It is being donated to Bert DeVink, uh, who is the artist who lives, lives here, he's lived here most of his life. And then Bert I intends on donating the moose to, to the city. So I just want to be clear on that. So a little bit of background. Uh, while enrolled at Camosun College in Victoria more than 50 years ago, longtime Quinell resident slash artist Bert DeVink f uh, fabricated a life-size bull moose in his metal arts class. And a picture of the moose is on the following page. It's quite an impressive structure. And um, so moose, Bert's moose has been on display on Camosun College grounds ever since. Fast forward to last fall, when I received a call from Nate Bellow, who was councillor 1992 to 2001 and mayor 2002 to 2008, pitching me with his idea to ask Camosun College if Bert's moose could come home to Bert here in Quinell. After viewing a photo of Bert's moose, I immediately expressed to Nate what a wonderful idea this is and that I would even come to Victoria with my truck and trailer to bring Bert's moose home. The Camosun College Board of Directors graciously agreed with the proposal and their letter is attached with this agenda package and Bert and friends are delighted. Bert has agreed to donate his moose to the city as public as public art. Three of Bert's other public art creations are on display on Reed Street, at West Fraser Center, and at the Quinell Women's Resource Center. My friend, and incidentally longtime moose hunting partner, John Matthews, who thrives on transporting complex items such as life-size metal moose, has agreed to volunteer to accompany, uh, accompany me on our mission to bring Bert's moose home to Quinell, after which we will discuss and decide and prepare for a permanent home here in the city for this wonderful sculptured metal moose. And my recommendation, uh, and this is, has also gone to FSAC, that council agree to set aside $5,000, and I can say we're not going to need anywhere near that, uh, from the council initiatives account to cover travel to Camosun College in Victoria to transport Burt's Moose to Quinell for this coming spring. So if I could get a mover for that, uh, Councillor McKelvey, <coughs> Councillor Vick, any discussion? Uh, Councillor Rudenberg. Thank you. And you know, it's wonderful that we have an amazing, um, we have such amazing art talent in this community. And I've always been appreciative of, of any of the work that we have of, <clears throat> sorry, of Mr. DeVink's um, artwork. My question is around process. So um, all of this work was done preeminently before coming to council to ask whether we wanted to have this um, come and be part of our art installation here. So I'm just kind of curious, is this the way we do business, that we get this all organized and then we come to council or do we actually uh, ask council? Because this would be really embarrassing if council turned around and said, no, thank you, we don't want it. All this work that you've done and everything that's been arranged. So it's about the process that this how this unfolded and I'd like to see that process cleared up for the next time we have an opportunity to bring something like this back to the city. Um, I'm not I'm not against the artwork, don't get me wrong. I, it's about the process and making sure that we do the process the same every time we have these kind of opportunities. The only question I have is um, when do you think you're going to go down there and if you're going down now, um, where do you plan on storing it? Because as far as I know, we have no place to install it yet. Okay, uh, just just a little bit of uh, f first to answer your question. I I think it would be very difficult if I was to come to council. What do you think of this idea? Um, and uh, certainly we had to get some background. And also we got to remember that 
Camosun is donating the moose back to Bert, and, and Bert has agreed to donate it to the city. So it, it, it is a bit of a, a chicken and egg and an egg thing. Um, John Matthews has uh, volunteered to uh, at least uh, house the moose in his shop until we can decide uh, what and how we're going to, to deal with it. Um, we're not sure on the, on the condition of the moose as to whether it should be or could be uh, displayed outdoors. I think it can be, but certainly it needs to be evaluated by someone, and, and John is certainly a good candidate, and also there's um, Aaron Harder, who is also interested in, in helping us with this. So, um, yeah, it, I, I can understand that there might be some question marks uh, around the process, but basically this recommendation is the ask. So I'll leave it up to council to um, to decide on that. So thank I, you. So thank you for that. I appreciate, and I know that there's been a lot of work done behind the scenes because you approached me back in September about the possibility of this happening. Um, have we thought? Okay, so you've answered the question around storage costs. So you said that there is going to be some um, consideration around how how the moose has <laughs> how it's handled its transportation up here. So there might be a cost to repair it. Have we? Also also looked at what the cost to install it will be, or is that going to be dependent on where it gets installed? Well, certainly the, the, the cost to, to install it isn't going to be a lot. I mean, it sits on a concrete pad in Camosun College now that measures approximately six feet by eight feet, and I think the, the concrete is maybe six or eight inches thick, so it's, it's not a huge expense. Um, we just haven't, I mean, we're not going to know the answers to these questions until we actually get the moose here. But this, this is the objective of this recommendation, is to get the moose up to Quinell. Thank you very much for that. I do appreciate uh, those an um, you answering my question. And I know, like I said before, um, it's amazing that we have artists like this in the community that are willing to donate their hard, <laughs> their, their hard work to art to our city. So thanks for that. And finally, I, I don't think there's anybody on council or staff that's not aware of what I've been up to. I mean, I've been freely sharing, you know, information about this idea. And uh, it all started with um, uh, former Mayor Nate Bellow, who called me with the idea. So uh, do, we, do we have a motion? Or, or Councillor Runge, are you moving? Question. Oh, question. Go ahead. So, you know, being, being the money guy here, my question is always about the money. The 5000 is, uh, you, you said it will be way less. Uh, I guess what I'm asking for is that when it comes in that we have a breakdown of how those costs transpired, because there is that transparency piece that is really, really important prior to, like I would say, hey, fuel, use car use, whatever, whatever we decide, that that, that to me should be clean. Uh, just an open-ended thing, then we don't know if that 5,000 goes to storage costs or goes to repairs or goes to whatever. I just want to, I just want things to be clean so it doesn't look like we are, you know, padding anybody's pocket inadvertently. And it's n absolutely, by the way, nothing to do about the moose. I think that'd be wonderful. It'd Okay, I can answer that. Uh, we will not be uh, we will not be looking for um, the city's uh, mileage or kilometerage rate. Just just flat fuel, ferry fare, um, whatever the motel costs. Uh, we won't be looking for uh, the daily per diem for the city. We'll be living on A and W hamburgers. So it'll be done very frugally. You know, it's okay to have a per diem here and there, but all right, thank you very much for the, I do appreciate that. So do I, oh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Runge, oh, no, sorry, Runge? <laughs> yeah, thank you. go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, and I just uh, uh, echo some of the comments around, you know, the, the $5,000, if if there's some way to break that down, it seems like we're we're giving a, a lot for from a council initiatives to, to cover that. My uh, comment was in your, your background summary, so I just want clarification that this came from Nate Bellow, his ask when to the college for it. It doesn't seem like the college was just saying, here's a donate. It was like it was requested from somebody that this be returned back to the city. Is that correct? I just want to understand that process because that's clear for me. If we, it, it sounds like there was an ask by somebody to bring this back to Quinell. It wasn't like the college was saying we can't store it anymore or keep that within the, with where it is. Yeah, I think um, this was before I ever got involved that, um, 
I know I may be wrong on this, but my recollection or my information says that Bert DeVink got a hold of Nate Bellow and asked Nate if there was any way that um, they could see the moose coming back to Quinnell, or well, well, the moose was never here, but coming to Quinnell, and that's when Nate picked up the torch, and that's when Nate called me, and the rest is history so far. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I just thought Councillor Vick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Regarding the expenses, <clears throat> as per process with, with my committee, those expenses will come to my committee for review. So there will be some oversight and there will be a, a checking of those expenses, much like there are is a review of all expenses for all council when they go on a trip. Um, those expenses are reviewed by FSAC. So um, to make everyone feel um, comfortable, those expenses will be reviewed by the committee and, and yeah. we'll everything will be receipted. Okay, so do I have a mover yet? Uh, Councillor Vick, you're moving? Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor McKelvey, you're moving? No, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to staff. <laughs> I was just making sure. Okay, so uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you, Councillor. The moose is on the move. So the next item is the one that is... Um, uh, no, pardon me. We're going to go to admin report number 47 slash 24 BC Transit Electronic Fare Collection System. And I, I apologize this because it says late item attachment under delegation. It also says late agenda attachment under this. So I'm presuming that they are one and the same late, late, late agenda attachment. Am I correct? Um, they're certainly linked, you know, that, that uh, Lindsay provided an overview of the UMO uh, program and how it's being implemented, and this uh, speaks to uh, one of the things that she mentioned there, which is that BC Transit is looking for approval of uh, one of the universal policies that they, uh, they are implementing. Um, so uh, the purpose of this report is to uh, get Council's approval for adjustments to the fare structure for the Quinnell transit system to accommodate the implementation of the new electronic fare collection system uh, by BC Transit, which uh, is starting in the spring of 2024. Um, so uh, I probably don't need to go over too much because Lindsay kind of covered a lot of that, but Council did pass a resolution on June 15th, 2021 to support participation in the program along with making the funding commitment uh, for the municipal share of the costs associated with that implementation. And, uh, you know, again, Quinnell is actually the only community that is of the 16 that didn't already have an electronic fare box system, you know, that we, uh, we were we're using quite outdated technology, so it's a, a bigger leap for us technology-wise than it is for some of the larger urban centers that are participating in the program in this initial phase. Um, while there's no changes proposed at this time to Quinnell Transit rates, uh, which would involve a separate process independent from the implementation of UMO, which I think Lindsay touched on in the in her presentation, uh, there are a number of changes that are being proposed to the fare structure as a result of the implementation of UMO, and I think it's about four or five or six, you know, modest changes to refund policies and that sort of thing. Uh, but there's one change that uh, that uh, BC Transit is seeking Council's approval for. Or, um, these uh, policies are normally included in the annual operating agreements, but there's a bit of a time gap. The annual operating agreement would typically come to council in uh, late spring, usually in May or June, uh, for approval, and BC Transit is moving ahead with this program right away, so it's it's sort of imminent. So this is uh, the one policy that they uh, have sort of deemed to be not as administrative, and uh, they want the local governments who are participating to uh, pass resolutions indicating their support for them. And that is the conversion of the current fixed rate monthly pass. So now when people buy a pass, it's fixed to a calendar date. So there's a March pass that goes from March 1st to March 31st. And if you want to buy a pass in the middle of the month, you either have to buy a March pass that expires in two weeks or wait until uh, May 1st to buy a pass. Uh, so they want to upgrade that system so that it becomes a 30-day rolling pass 
that'll provide greater flexibility for uh, customers and allow them to uh, auto load their passes so that basically they just have a continuous pass that keeps auto loading every time it expires. Um, so the recommendation is that council approve a change in the structure to the transit monthly pass as part of the implementation of the UMO electronic fare collection system in which the pass is converted from a fixed date pass to a rolling 30 day pass. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Elliott, are you moving? Yes, sir. Thank you. And Councillor Vic is seconding. Any questions, concerns? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you for that. So now we will go to admin. Now, okay, the next item is um, K2, which was report on Quinell Active Transportation. That has been um, stood down. Now we go to K3, admin report 40C slash 24. Maple Drive remedial action. This is for the Maple Drive or for the, the Maple Park Shopping Center director Turner to report. Thank you, Mayor. Council, this is just a quick update on where we are at with the remedial, remedial action order that uh, Council put in place uh, last month for Maple Park Mall. Um, the the order was issued. It went out to um, the owner's uh, addresses, um, uh, yeah, uh, four different addresses you'll see in the notice, as well as the, uh, as well as the mortgage holder. Um, we uh, did uh, not receive any uh, communications from the owner themselves, although we do note that uh, um, in at least two uh, occasions we do note receipt of mail. Um, the um, uh, mortgage holder, on the other hand, also noted receipt of mail and uh, advised that they would take on doing the sealing of the building. Um, they, uh, they advised that they were uh, going to be employing Murray Restorations um, Limited to do such works, in, uh, and uh, they have started those works. Um, and we are, uh, we've advised that, you know, this, this needs to be completed in a timely fashion. Um, uh, they did advise that they, they estimated two weeks for this and we are, we are, uh, and I've, uh, as you'll see in the resolution uh, or uh, recommendation uh, or in, in the report that I am re recommending that they have this done. Um, by by uh, uh, March 15th. So um, uh, we, we're trying to keep com communications going and make sure the, the work does get completed and we will keep you posted if there's any changes to that. But at this point, it will be the mortgage holder doing the sealing of the building um, and the uh, work will be completed um, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, thank you. Uh, I know that the recommendation is that we receive this for information only. Uh, would it be helpful or to the process that we actually put that into a form of a resolution so that the process is complete? Just a question. Th thank you, Mary Ann. That's why I've, I didn't put it in the in the uh, in the rec in the resolution because it's not really necessary. We can't necessarily order the mortgage holder to be doing this. They are doing this on their own volition, um, and so we will work with them. But we will also try and ensure that if they don't keep it going, that we will uh, again step in. Okay, good to see that this uh, this file is uh, moving ahead. So uh, we don't have any resolution on that one. Now I'm going to go to uh, K4, admin report 26B24, bylaw 1955. Mayor. And Councillor Rudenberg, uh, you're uh, recusing yourself. So uh, now I go to Director Bolton for this report. Mayor, sorry, Tanya did have a recommendation in her report. Do you need that? Thank as you. a resolution? It was just for a receipt, but uh, you, you, I believe if, yeah, you don't, it's, it's necessary only if you feel it is. Okay. So the purpose of this report is to request council to proceed with the third reading of the West Quinnell Business Improvement Area Bylaw 1955. So the West Quinnell Business Improvement Area Bylaw expired in 2023. After the first two readings of the bylaw, letters were sent to all the business owners in the BIA or property owners in the BIA area, informing them regarding the renewal of the bylaw and giving them the opportunity to petition against the bylaw. So you'll see in the in the report, I listed all the letters that were received. Three letters were received representing 2.9% of the assessed value of the parcels. So the bylaw is automatically defeated if letters opposing the bylaw represented 50% of the assessed value and 50% of the parcels. Anything below that is council's option as to whether or not proceed. So the recommendation is that council proceed with the third reading of the City of Quinnell, West Quinnell Business Improvement Area Bylaw 1955 of 2024. 
Okay, thank you. Um, moved, moved by Councillor Vick, seconded by Councillor Elliott. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. If you could just uh, call Councillor Rudenberg back in, please. The next item uh, is uh, admin report 46B24, operating budget. Director Bolton to report. Thank you. So the purpose of this report is to seek council's approval of the operating budget for 2024. So council has re reviewed the attached draft operating budget and the input received from the public through the yearly budget survey and the open council budget meeting. The financial sustainability and audit committee recommends the attached operating budget to council, including the use of 20, 200,000 surplus to reduce taxation as outlined on page 10 of the budget overview. The operating budget has total taxation of 20,437,700 with all the supplemental requests built in. This is a 5.6% increase to the total tax levy over 2023. Revised assessments will be received in mid-March that will determine the final taxation rates that will be built into the tax rate law. So the next step, of course, is to build the five-year financial plan bylaw and the tax rate bylaw once this is approved. So the recommendation is that Council approve the attached operating budget, including the use of 200000 of 2023 surplus, and direct staff to continue building the five-year financial plan based on this budget. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we do have a, uh, Councillor Rudenberg, are you moving the recommendation? Yes, you are. And you have a, what, I'm going to get a seconder first. Councillor Elliott. Okay, Councillor Rudenberg. Thank you. Um, I had mentioned to um, Councillor Vic about um, secondary school bursaries, which is on page 22 of 31. And it just, it looks like it's been reduced by one scholarship or bursary. And I was, yeah, I was just wondering what was, what was happening there. Um, is it 1600 in the current, the 2024 year? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find it. Yeah. That's so correct. We had to carry forward one we had to carry forward one of the bursaries forward last year because if a student waited a year to go to school, so we had an extra amount in there last year that we don't have this year. We just have the normal two that we always have. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's great. It's glad that, I'm glad that we can do that too, by the way. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, before I call the question, I just... Uh, Councillor Runch, I'm sorry, that hand wasn't very high up. Yeah, oh, I know, thank you. Uh, you know, first off, I want to thank all the guys that showed up last week to talk with us with regards to our budget. And there was that one budget amount for, and I just, I just can't find it here, so I'm going blind, on that $10,000, uh, um, I think it was advertising for the bike tra trail. And I'm wondering if, if the chance, if it permits, if some of that could possibly also be used for, for we had I, um, we had the presentation with regard to the Al Arts Council and uh, advertising for the arts in Quinell. And if that, you know, if it was a generic uh, advertising, that's great. But I'm wondering if we could somehow incorporate that to say, look, we've listened to you and maybe we can do something to support, you know, from that, from that number. Um, it's unfortunate that our manager of economic development and tourism isn't here to answer that because I, I believe she has a set plan for that 10,000 for bike marketing. So, but that's something we could discuss as a future budget item. But that was a planned project that was approved in the supplemental list or was part of our supplemental list. Yeah, I just, I just, you know, if, if, if we're spending it all on one influencer, I'm just that I'd rather spend it slightly differently. But that's, if there's anything left, hey, if we can keep that in the back of our head, that'd be wonderful. And then the other thing, and this is, of course, going forward, I do, uh, you know, we had a couple uh, discussions and points brought up with regards to water usage in town. And uh, I think that will, somewhere going forward, we should actually maybe have some discussion somewhere with regards to are we metering at the right places or should we meter at certain places with regards to, uh, you know, the bigger consumers of water? Are we actually getting our fair uh, share or are we actually subsidizing a business, and st uh, you know, to a larger extent with from our cost? Just something that we want to think about in the future. Absolutely, we can, uh, we've discussed water conservation a number of times and it's definitely something to do. Rates we discuss every year with the FSAC committee and we did have urban two years ago now or three years ago look at all our water rates and make sure that they were reasonable, that we were charging the right type of businesses, the right rates, but absolutely water conservation is always on our minds. Anyone else? Okay, we have a, a mover and a seconder on this one and um, so I'll call the question, all in favor? Opposed, carried, and I'd just like to take this opportunity to, to thank you, Councillor Vic, for shepherding this through along with um, 
your FSAC committee and, and a big thank you to Carrie and her staff. I think it's a, a job well done and certainly a lot of work and uh, so, so thank you. Okay, moving right along, we don't have anything from our council information package that at least I haven't had any requests for anything that being brought. I think there's only two items on that on that piece right now. Uh, so now we move to bylaws. Bylaw number 1954, City of Quinell Zoning Amendment Bylaw 1954, Juniper Road, final adoption, mover. Mover, sec mover Councillor Elliott seconded. Councillor McKelvey, you're looking at me, that means you're moving. So, all in, oh, submit. any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried? And then bylaw number 1956, City of Quinell Zoning Amendment bylaw number 1956, and this is for 530 Carson Avenue, final adoption. Uh, Councillor Rudenberg, Councillor Elliott, any discussion? Opposed or in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. We have no new business. Uh, we not, we have no changes to upcoming meeting schedule or no changes to committee appointments. Um, I would like now to go to uh, announcements and events. If anybody has anything, I've got one item. Okay, seeing nothing, and th this has to do with. Um, Epilepsy Awareness Month, which is upon us, and um, I think everyone in the community knows the the, the, um, the great work that uh, Natasha Wasmuth has done, not only to put uh, the epilepsy cause into the spotlight here in Quinell, but basically all over British Columbia and, and throughout the country. Um, just a reminder that uh, there's a lot going on under the Epilepsy Awareness uh, Month and, and fundraising campaign. There's a sip and splatter uh, paint night on March the 9th, which is sold out. Uh, Quinell Bakery's usual goodies. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna be speaking on that in just a moment. Um, there's also a special donut day at, um, at the bakery uh, for on March the 26th. Craig's Table is getting involved. Purple ribbons are available by donation at, and I've given each council member a complimentary uh, pur uh, purple ribbon. They are available by, by donation at Fraser View Pharmacy. Extra Foods Pharmacy, cookies for epilepsy all throughout March. Shoppers Drug Mart cookies for ep uh, epilepsy. March 23 to 27. Bliss is putting on a mega hot, dales, a hot dog sale for epilepsy on 20, March 26, 28. And it really is mega. It says here that it takes up the whole plate and I saw a picture of it and I believe it. Uh, they're also holding their third annual silent auction for epilepsy with amazing baskets from, for, from some even more amazing businesses. So check out their, poster, their posters on, on Facebook. And again, uh, thanks to Quinell Town for making such a big part of our, our cause. We've raised $55,556 so far, and our goal this year is to reach $65,000, and I think that they're well on their way, and I, I'm happy to be contributing to that. So um, what I've done, too, is I've, I've circulated to each council member an order form uh, for the... Um, for the ep lunch for epilepsy, and um, just important to note that orders for lunch, and th these are um, lunches that are gonna be put up by uh, GERD up at Quinell Bakery, and uh, they're $16 each, including tax, and the deadline, it's important to note that the deadline uh, for ordering up those um, lunches is um, March the 8th. The actual event is on um, March the 13th, so. Just for your information, Council, um, Natasha does a wonderful job on this, and I'm, I'm happy to sort of be here uh, promoting it in front of Council and in, in front of uh, the, the public as well. Is there anything more that we need to discuss, or can we move for a motion to adjourn? Councillor McAlvey, you look like you're ready to move adjournment. Okay, and Councillor Elliott, you're happy to second. Questions from the gallery? Oh, I'm sorry. I, no? RJ, come on, you got to have a question. I do, but uh, I'll save that for a 
Okay, you're, you're going to save it, are you? Okay. All right, so I now look for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Elliott, Councillor Rudenberg, thank you. I don't think that needs a vote.